Hello folks, my name is Don Collier. I've lived and worked in Arizona for over 40 years. I've made my living as an actor in movies and television, recently hosting the television series, The Desert Speaks. Now, many of the movies I've worked in tried to portray some part of Arizona or Southwestern history, but they were mostly fiction. However, there are some folks who are into the real thing, mostly archeologists and historians, and they're working together to try to solve one of the mysteries of American history. You might be able to help us. For well over 100 years, archeologists and historians have been trying to find the route through Arizona or Western New Mexico used by explorer Vasquez de Coronado in 1540 to 1542. The men of Coronado's expedition were the first Europeans to set eyes on this part of America. Starting out in central Mexico, Coronado traveled north and east along prehistoric trade trails to the Pueblo of Zuni in New Mexico and beyond to the plains of Kansas in search of the fabled but non-existent seven cities of gold. While sites in northern New Mexico, Texas, and Kansas have been identified as likely Coronado sites, None have been located from the Mexican border to the Zuni Pueblo. There are some historical Spanish documents that describe that route and the Indians that he encountered along the way. But these records are vague and open to differing interpretations, leading to several theories about the actual location of the route. One theory has Coronado following the Santa Cruz River across the Mexican border into Arizona past the Phoenix area before angling east across the present-day New Mexico border to the Zuni Pueblo. Another has the expedition coming into Arizona along the Santa Cruz River, then angling eastward across the San Pedro River and north past Safford, eventually moving eastward to Zuni. The most popular theory has the expedition coming into Arizona along the San Pedro, turning northeast just past Benson and proceeding north up the Aravipa Valley before crossing northeast to Zuni. There is another version that has Coronado entering Arizona near Douglas and weaving back and forth across the present Arizona-New Mexico border to Zuni. And there are still other variations. The truth of the matter is, we don't know. Archaeologists and historians have been unsuccessful in finding Coronado's route based on the various interpretation of the documents. We do know that the expedition was a large one. Historical documents lead researchers to believe that there were as many as 350 Spaniards, over two-thirds of them mounted. In addition, there were over 1,000 Indians from Central Mexico, over 1,000 horses and mules, 500 head of cattle, and 5,000 sheep. The late Dr. Emil Howry, a distinguished University of Arizona archaeologist, always believed that, given the size of the expedition, there had to have been many artifacts lost and discarded along the way. He thought that, over the years, local ranchers and farmers must have found some of them on their lands, and many of these artifacts could be sitting on people's fireplace mantles or bookshelves today. You might think it would be impossible to tell if a strange bit of metal, a broken pottery, or perhaps a bead came from Coronado's time, or from later European explorers. Often it will be, but we're in luck. Thanks to recent research, we now know that there are some items that were only used in Coronado's time. If an artifact could be authenticated and the area where it was found could be determined, it would be a major step in helping solve this historical mystery. Now let me tell you a little bit more about some of these artifacts. A small number of mounted Spanish wore helmets and assorted body armor, including chain mail. But some historians believe that most wore native garb. The horseshoes used by the Spanish looked very different from modern ones, and given the number of horses on the expedition, there had to have been many of them lost along the way. Two New Mexico historians, Richard and Shirley Flint, who have spent many years researching the type of artifacts that would have been left behind by the expedition, believe that the carrot head nails used to fasten horseshoes to the horse's hooves, and possibly for other purposes, are one of the most diagnostic and plentiful artifacts that could be found. These nails have a distinctive triangular shape and must have been lost or thrown away by the thousands. Coronado's was the last Spanish expedition that used the crossbow. 
Later explorers carried firearms. It is almost certain that any crossbow parts or bolts found in the southwest came from Coronado's expedition. Arrows for crossbows are called quarrels or bolts. The tips of the bolts are called bolt heads. They were small, usually made of copper. They've been found in northern New Mexico, but none yet in Arizona. Other diagnostic artifacts are the Nueva Cadiz glass beads. They were made in Spain and include blue twisted cylinder-like beads and multicolored chevron beads. Another distinctive Coronado artifact type is the sheet brass Clarksdale bell. Items such as bells and beads were used for gifts and trading. The most difficult objects to identify may be those left behind by the Mexican Indians that accompanied Coronado. There is very little in Coronado's records about them. The Flints believe that some of the characteristics of the obsidian used as blades or tools, like those you see on the screen, are unlike those made by the Native Americans they would have encountered in Arizona or western New Mexico. The ceramics brought along on the expedition are also distinctive. They would most likely be from the most commonly made ceramics of the native Mexican Indians, as well as some Spanish items. These are examples of Aztec polychrome and Aztec IV. Both types are from Mexico and are very different from anything made by the local inhabitants of the southwest at that time. Spanish olive jar fragments like these may also be found. We're not asking people to go out searching for Coronado artifacts or sites. What we're trying to do with this project is connect with the people who may already have examples of these artifacts in their possession. You'd be surprised what the researchers can learn from items collected many years ago. Now, anyone who thinks they have a possible Coronado object or knows of one can call the people at the Center for Desert Archaeology in Tucson. The telephone number is at the bottom of the screen. I know there might be some people out there who believe that what these historians and archaeologists really want to do is take any possible Coronado object from them. I can assure you this is not the case. As interesting as the artifact might be, the most important thing in finding the Coronado route is knowing where the object was found. I'm Dan Elias. Many of you may have watched the public broadcasting program, The Antique Roadshow. Well, the group working on this project will be staging Coronado Roadshows in several Arizona and western New Mexico towns. Check the packet that came with the video for dates, times, and locations. The idea is for anyone with a possible Coronado object to bring it to one of these roadshows. There will be archaeologists and historians giving presentations at these events. They'll also be on hand to study and record the objects you may bring in and tell you more about them. The Arizona Historical Society has expressed interest in creating an exhibit in the museum in Tucson of these objects brought to the shows, if the owners are willing to loan them. Each artifact exhibited would be identified, noting the owner, unless the owner doesn't want to be identified, and the approximate location where the object was found would be marked on a map. With your help and some luck, we may be able to finally pin down the Coronado route across the United States-Mexico border to the Zuni Pueblo. That would be a great contribution to American history.